Dennis Wrigley Ministries, a better way. Unity, renewal and healing. A lot of people are asking about the nature of the Maranatha community, its life and how it operates. And this is a very difficult thing for me uh, to speak about because it is always bubbling up with new ideas and new initiatives and new visions that uh, it's very difficult for me to spell it out with great precision. All I can say is that it's a movement of Christian people from every tradition who recognize oneness in Christ. Now, how does it work? Well, we have local Maranatha groups, 45 of them in various parts of the country. And they meet regularly to pray, to praise. They meet for healing. They meet for consideration of major local or national issues. Above all, they wait upon God. Now, in addition to those, we have about 150 Maranatha prayer cells. Uh, these meet each week, and we're in touch with them from our office. And we coordinate prayer initiatives, prayers for intercession for individuals and for important current issues. And this is part of the vibrancy of the life of Maranatha. Now, how does it work? We simply have an office in Flixton, near to Manchester, uh, of three paid people. And beyond that, all the uh, people who work in the community, myself included, uh, we are volunteers. We do not take any uh, pay. And therefore, the community is a dispersed community of people who give of their time and energy and talents for this community, which is a servant community for the church. Why is it that it's, it's moved so rapidly over the years? Why is it that it has grown geographically? Why is it that there are so many people active in all the churches within its community, this community? And the answer, I believe, is simply, it's God's initiative, not ours. We don't urge people to come and join us because we're good, outstanding. We don't go in for any uh, celebrity emphasis or leadership emphasis. We're little brothers and sisters of Jesus. And it works like this. We have regular regional meetings in various parts where members of the community and representatives of local groups and prayer cells and individuals come together to pray. And then every year, the leadership gathers. Um, in fact, not just once, at the beginning of the year in January to plan and to, uh, and to endeavor to be obedient to God. But then again in the summer. And that, those two gatherings, I suppose, are the, are the fulcrum points for the community. Now, how do we draw the threads together to be community? Very simply, we respond to people's promptings. People will send us prayers. People will send us prophetic statements. People will send us urgent requests for help. Over and over again, we are sucked into major worrying problems. Problems of people with drug addiction, uh, the problems of the homeless, the problems of broken families, the problems of child abuse. Uh, and what happens is Maranatha draws upon its resources, for we have within the community very many people in various professions and callings who give of their time. And therefore, we respond. We send out a regular newsletter to all our members and friends. We also have a little newspaper which goes to the uh, individual Maranatha prayer cells and local groups. But then, 
In addition to that, we have a campaigning arm of the community called Trumpet Corps. And when there are major issues facing us, issues of persecution of Christians overseas, issues of injustices in this country, we actually send out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these trumpet call sheets, which inform people uh, of the details of what is happening. And we give them the people to whom uh, they can make their submissions and send their letters to. And that's gone on for years. And that reaches out to tens of thousands of people. And it is a means of ensuring that the Christian voice is heard effectively, publicly, in this land. And this, in this, we work with many other Christian agencies, both in Parliament and in the, the country. Supporting all this, we have a, a strong emphasis upon research. And every day we analyse newspapers. And every day we make extracts from them and we put them into what we call fact file. And in that uh, electronic fact file, we can identify issues, and this has been going now for probably 18 years, uh, whether it is drugs or whether it is crime, whatever it is, and we can identify what's been happening. And we can supplement that with specialist research by our specialist teams. Because of this, we have been led to make countless submissions to government, to the United Nations, to the European Parliament, and to specialist bodies, often professional groupings. And we have always endeavoured to present uh, a Christian attitude to lay down the foundations of Christian morality. And the response to this initiative has, has been huge. Let me give you an instance. Many years ago, we made a call to the nation. You may think that's presumptive. Well, God said, speak to the nation. And so we got a document called a call to the nation. And we presented it in Parliament to members of the House of Commons and House of Lords. There was a huge response. Over seven and a half million copies of that document went out. And we found that the response was enormous from the most unexpected places. And flowing from that, we were asked to produce a special document on children, which we did. And that document, What on Earth We're Doing to Our Children, was presented by Viscount Caldicott in the House of Lords and led to the floodgates opening, led to a full debate in the House of Commons about children in this land, led to the National Conference on Children in Coventry Cathedral, led to major initiatives for children in this land. And then again, we, we made a presentation to Parliament about um, what was going on in our nation. In the morning, we had a team of specialists, economists, sociologists, educationalists, lawyers, who made a presentation in the House of Lords, a meeting there. And in the afternoon, we had a team of seven or eight young people explaining the problems of inner cities and presenting the details of what they were doing at the coal face to deal with them. And we ended the day with a great prayer meeting for the nation. Those are kinds of initiatives which Maranatha readily takes. I think in parallel with this, it's important that you realise that we do an immense amount of research to give help to parliamentarians. It's important that you recognise that we do a tremendous amount of research on behalf of parliamentarians and people in government departments. And over and over again, we have produced documents which are sources of help, which are resources 
for Christian leaders in the country. For example, we produced a full report on the subject Western Culture and the Christian Gospel, and we gave factual evidence of what was happening in terms of the basics of our society, the the changes which were occurring, the weaknesses which were becoming apparent. And then we produced another report entitled Our Christian Identity, where we spelt out the nature of de-Christianization which was taking place. In all these things, we involve many people. Sometimes we're led to make specialist studies, for example, on Islam, or on the occult, or on persecution of Christians worldwide, uh, or on Israel. In all these cases, we have teams of people who spend hours and hours researching, sharing, praying, writing, and giving information which can be used. And at the end of the day, we find that it's an ever-changing scene. That is why there's a certain dynamic in the Maranatha community. There is an interplay between prayer and action. Many of the problems we have to face are very complex, such as uh, the growing scourge of drug addiction, or the collapse of the marriage-based family in many parts of this country, or the development of sexually transmitted diseases, particularly among the young. And so we need to have clinical evidence, economic evidence, social evidence, in order to spell out the dynamic of the gospel. Now, supporting all this on an ongoing basis, we have an enormous range of prayer material. Lots and lots of prayer sheets, prayer folders, prayer books. And all this is a fundamental part of the Maranatha community. Now, we also have training courses. We have, round the year, residential courses, non-residential courses, helping people to pray more effectively, helping people to grow in faith, helping people to uh, understand the demands of the gospel. And at the same time as all this, we endeavour to ensure that individual men and women grow stronger in the faith. Maranatha has been a generative movement. By that I mean vast numbers of people have been led into specialist ministry. A large number of uh, people have had callings to be pastors, to be uh, ministers and priests over the years, and they've gone all over the world. There's been a very rich harvest. As a community, we have endeavoured to have quite a low profile because we claim to be nothing more than little brothers and sisters of Jesus. But I have to tell you that things are changing. Because of the intensified assault upon the faith by secular humanists, very often in high places, very often well organized, very often well financed, we are now being led to, I believe by God, uh, to become far more uh, proactive rather than reactive. And this means that the next stage of our journey is going to be, I believe, uh, much more energetic than even the past. God is calling us to engage, not disengage. God is calling us to go into the marketplace. God is calling us to go into politics. God is calling us to understand the emerging culture. God is calling us into a deeper understanding of new forms of communication and social networking. All this requires enormous resource. We have a little office, a little bookshop, a little prayer room. We have no regular source of income. We have no wealthy benefactors. 
We have no subscription rates. How does it work? I simply don't know. It's been a miracle over the years. Year by year, God has provided the resources, the people and the money. Now, we are facing the biggest challenge for over 32 years. The doors of opportunity are flung wide open to this community. There is a yearning for renewal in the life of the church. There is a yearning for greater unity. There is a yearning for the release of the Christian healing ministry in our midst. And this is an invitation to you. If you are concerned about these things, if you are concerned about a church in this land which needs the reinvigorating power of the Spirit sweeping through it, then we invite you to walk with us. Not to leave your church, but to be more active in your church. Not to separate, but become integrated with one another so that together we can see in this nation God do great things. In this community, we have seen miracles, miracles of conversion, miracles of healing. We've seen people who've been living lives uh, largely in, in prison being transformed. We've seen people released from the curse of drugs. We've seen damaged families healed, mended, put together. We've seen churches spring to life. We've seen individual Christians become motivated as never before. This is our calling, and we invite you to be part of it. This is a direct appeal We've never done this before. I would plead with you to ask yourself, how much are you doing to bring unity in the church? How much are you doing to develop the healing ministry of the church? How much are you doing to contribute to real revival of faith in the land? That's a challenge. Maybe you're doing much more than we are, in which case, God bless you and we're with you. As a community, We work with others. We work with Christian groups in public life. We work with Christian groups concerned with uh, persecution of the church. We work with prophetic groups. We work with healing ministries. Uh, And all that I can say is that we simply gather threads together. We do not know where God is taking us next, but we are certain that He is with us because the very prayer. Maranatha, the title of our community, is an asking, come Lord Jesus. We want Jesus to come into our situation here and now, and we yearn for his coming at the end of human history. So I simply say to you the prayer of the early church, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus. One of our sisters in Italy adds the phrase, Come, Lord Jesus, I can't wait any longer. God bless you. Dennis Wrigley Ministries, a better way, unity, renewal and healing. Thank you for watching.